So again, not a pick, but. And it, to make things crazy, I'm picking a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Laura Sanko here, joined, as always, by Dean Thomas. We're getting you ready for UFC 285. Uh, we already did a breakdown on the insane main event, Cyril Gone versus John Jones, so be sure and check that out. And then, of course, we're going to break down this co-main event, a flyweight title between Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso. And this is a very interesting matchup for a number of different reasons. Um, man, <laughs> Anytime I start to do a Valentina Shevchenko breakdown, though, it always starts with where wh what on earth is a path to victory? It's so difficult with her because she is, is such a complete fighter. Do you start with looking at the areas that she has, quote unquote, struggled in in the last maybe couple of fights, the moments against Jennifer Maya, the, the control time versus Tyla Santos, or is that kind of grasping at straws? So I have a lot of insight on this. So you've Ooh. come to the right person okay. because I trained Amanda Nunes twice to fight her. The first time I trained her to fight her, she actually pulled out of the fight because of the, the nasal issue. Yes. And then I actually was in her camp for the, uh, the time they did fight afterwards. Um, the reality is this, it's very difficult to keep up with Valentina. Mm-hmm. You know, she fights a very crafty fight. But what Taya Santos showed, and she confirmed what we knew, when I, what I knew from when I trained Amanda for her, is that she can be neutralized. Mm -hmm. And the key is in the neutralization, not in trying to necessarily match her. You have to neutralize her. And what, that's what Taya Santos did. She neutralized her. And Taya Santos is probably the best in that division at neutralizing, which is why like she could beat anybody because she could neutralize. She's strong enough to neutralize mm -hmm. anybody. Very So, specific. but in order to neutralize her, you have to have a, a complete game. You have to be stronger and you have to be able to get her down and hold her mm -hmm. and not allow her to get off. So I think that is the key for anybody who fights Valentina Shevchenko is neutralize her first. And then you can start to pick away. And that's that's a bit of a mountain to climb, honestly, yeah. for, for a lot of fighters. But I, I would say um, for Alexa, it's going to be a bit of a mountain to climb. I'm not counting her out of this fight by any stretch, but it's this is a tough one for her. I mean, she's on a heck of a run. She beat Jung Young Kim, Macy Barber, uh, Joanne Wood, Viviani Araujo. She's, had, she's starting together a series of really nice wins, and you can visibly see the evolution in her ground game particularly, her – you know, takedown defense, her takedown offense continues to grow leaps and bounds with every single fight. The cornerstone of her game is, was, always will be her phenomenal boxing, phenomenal boxing. And she does a great job of mixing the kicks in with, with that pure boxing as well. I think my biggest, I don't want to say concern, but my biggest thought about this fight in terms of um, what she might be up against is that her preferred range is where Valentina thrives. It's where Valentina wants to put herself anyway. And I, 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 I'm interested to see if uh, Alexa Grasso has figured out a way to approach things maybe a little bit differently than she would with another fighter. And, and that's the problem with being, having the type of skill set that she has. You know, like she's a great boxer. Like you said, probably some of the most fundamental boxing that mm -hmm. we can see in the UFC, men or women. Mm -hmm. She's great boxing. And she can kick. She's a boxer that can kick. Valentina's a kickboxer. Mm -hmm. There is a big difference. I know it's hard to explain. It is. <laughs> but it's a big difference mm -hmm. between a boxer who can kick and a kickboxer. Um, the problem is, she, she, I don't think she's going to be diverse enough. Because she, she doesn't change levels. And you need to be able to change levels against a fighter like Valentina Shevchenko. But because she's so disciplined in her boxing stance, it's hard for her to give a look to get Valentina to bite on anything other than thinking about punches and then an occasional kick mm -hmm. because her stance is so rigid and her stance is so disciplined and so loyal to that boxing style. Fundamentally sound. Yes. 
Yeah. But that doesn't allow for her to be able to get Valentina to think about anything else. Mm -hmm. And that can be a problem in this fight for her. We are, we're doing um, some wrestling demos on the way in show this week. So they had us pick out like um, a takedown from two people on the card that you want to just sort of break down and show, you know, the viewers what's done. And I, I picked one from Valentina, which meant that I had to go through a lot of her takedowns to see which one I thought, you know, would best suit my needs. And man, it's amazing to see. So like, and I picked one of John's as well. So John Jones has an encyclopedia of takedowns. It was unbelievable. And most of them happened in one fight against Stefan Bonner. It's unbelievable. He can take guys down in any which way. A lot of it is upper body, but he also has a double leg, a single leg, a high crotch. I mean, every single type of takedown. Valentina has a very specific meta and she does she it does. every single time. Body lock in this every single time and it's amazing to see it is just amazing to see and it's like i don't know if it's because so a lot fewer women have any background in folk style wrestling coming up through high school i mean we're seeing more and more of that i'm not saying it doesn't exist but fewer mm -hmm. um I, I don't know if it's maybe that women don't train as much wrestling once they get into mma or cage wrestling i don't know but You'd think that, that that would be a problem that someone would be able to solve, but they just can't. She is so good at getting, whether she's got double unders, whether she's got double overs, whether she's got over under, she's going, it's just the simplest, easiest body lock takedown you've ever seen in your life. Sometimes that's, it's an inside trip. Sometimes it's an outside trip, but they all almost look exactly the same from the setup. And it's from those clinch situations. Well, you know, she's obviously very organized with that very much like Aaron Blanchfield and the way she does things. I think Aaron Blanchfield has a lot more diversity to her as you could, what do you call it? A What kind of tree do you call it? A decision tree. A yeah. decision tree. Yeah. I think Aaron Blanchfield has more decisions on her decision tree, but the good thing about having what uh, Valentina has is that she gets right to it every time. Yeah. So she beats you to the spot every time because she knows where she's going. And while you're like trying to figure it out and get a feeling, she knows exactly where she's going and she's so good at it. Um, to answer your question about the women and because mm -hmm. I, I have you, been you trained a lot of women yeah, so I, and I, I have been very stuff. I've been very stern about this and I'm very opinionated about this and I'm always telling girls girls women stop training like women and mm -hmm. train like a fighter because women always go oh I want to train with other girls mm -hmm. there's no girls at this gym there's a Technique has no gender. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why women fight in a specific way is because they do so because they do it. They choose to. They don't have to. They choose to. They choose to do the headlock. <laughs> no, don't even get me started. <laughs> they choose to. <laughs> yeah. They don't have to. It's not because they're women. They, For whatever reason, they choose to. And it drives me absolutely crazy. And... The women that I still work with now, I go, I don't care if you train with only boys or who you train with. Technique has no gender. Stop trying to use that as an excuse. Oh, I need more girls. I need more girls to work with. Mm -hmm. Stop feeling lonely. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. And get Because technique has no gender. Get out there and train like a fighter. And for that reason, there's women who've been able to get away with fighting a certain way because they're doing things differently. Mm -hmm. Valentina's using his body lock and no one can stop it because they haven't caught up yet because most women don't do it, but yeah. Valentina does. So, but guys do it. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot yeah. of Greco. There's a lot of Greco influence. Um, For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the male side of things. I do. I, 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 we should do a whole video just on the nuances of women's MMA because they do exist and they're fascinating to me. There's a lot of, you know, it's the same sport, of course, but there are some really unique aspects. And a lot of it to me comes down to women's MMA truly being a much younger sport than men's MMA. Yeah, for sure. Much I mean, that for 100%. It, you're right. It, it's, it's still younger and there's still some catching up to do. And there is still an element of, okay, so there's, this contingency of girls that had train over on the side here and they're not getting the same work mm -hmm. because they're training over here. 
So it's, I think it could be a while actually. You know, you know? That, it's, it's funny that you say that because I've never, and now we're kind of going off on a tangent, but it's okay. It's my channel. I can do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because I've often wondered where the truth really lies. Because like when I was coming up, there were no girls in the gym, none. I only trained with guys. So I was always significantly smaller than even the fly weights because I was an atom weight. And I feel like that had some advantages to it. But what I did not like about it is I never really knew if I was good or not <laughs> at practice. Like I had no measuring stick. Mm -hmm. So when I would get my ass beat, my mind would go, well, I mean, he's a guy and he's a lot bigger than you. Of course he did. You know, you did okay. And then I would win and I'd do something amazing. And my brain would go, yeah, but he let you, you know? Yeah. It yeah. was never... I never felt like I got to the truth of where my skill set was on a daily, daily basis. So I could really, um, pull out like, this is really where I need to work right here. So point being, but I agree with you. I can see a situation where if you're only training with women, it's, it's going to be a different, it's going to be a different, I don't know if the psychology is different or what, but I know exactly what you're talking about. It's almost hard to articulate. I feel like you have to have a mix. You've got to have a good mix. Well, here's if I was if I was a, a female fighting in the UFC right now, this is what I would do personally. And it's easy for me to say because I'm on the outside looking in and I've got a tremendous amount of experience in dealing with this. But if, if if that was the case, I would only train technique and drill and do specifics with with guys. Mm -hmm. And, and I spar. would only and I'd spar with girl with yeah. females. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. The The intensity of drilling, I think, is so critical to how you perform in a fight. And people who don't drill with intention, every single rep, there's no point in doing it. Anyway, we're getting we're getting off. Yeah, we're getting way <laughs> off the path now, Dean. Anyway, I'm sorry. I had to. I had no, to, no, it was me. It was me. To, I, I had to throw it, that in there. You're one of the few you're one of the few men in the sport who have a ton of experience training high level women and not just one, I mean, many, uh, many high level women and kind of understand those nuances. So I enjoy having that conversation with you, but back to this fight. Um, I, I'm interested to see, uh, the attitude, the vibe that we get off Valentina, because I get the impression that she does not appreciate the people who say that she lost against Tyla Santos. How could she not? Exactly. <laughs> like, she did. <laughs> she, like she wouldn't, she didn't dominate that fight. Like how could she go back and watch that fight? And then not think that there's going to be some criticism to it. And, and we can't criticize her performance on that. I mean, she didn't go out there and just, I mean, we're talking about a girl who was head and shoulders above everybody else. There was no wider gap between competition between champ and everybody else. Like it was between Valentina and the rest of the uh, featherweight or flyweight division. And then when Taya Santos came and gave her a complete run for her money, how could she be like, Oh no, it isn't. She's crazy to think that. But I think she's coming into that into this fight more motivated than she has been in a while because, as you say, she is in an echelon all, all her own in that division. She really is. You know, you get to a point where I don't think Valentina would ever disrespect the game by underestimating an opponent. She's too professional for that. But there's got to be a little piece of you that's just it's almost like Volkanovsky. You're just slightly less. There's not there's no fear. Right. There's no there's no chip on your shoulder. I think she's coming to this one, not afraid, no fear, but I do think there's a chip on her shoulder in that, you know, she wants to remind everybody that there is no one on her level, not even close. But I think that she's going to have this, she could have perhaps have the same problem. People just catch up. I know. Right. I think people just, I think people just catch up and I feel as though. You think Alexa's catching up? I don't know if Alexa is the one to prove it at this point right now in Alexa's career. I just don't know if her fighting style is going to be the skill set that it takes to beat someone like Valentina. I just don't see it. Be Again, a boxer who kicks never really does well against a good kickboxer. Mm -hmm. It just, the range is a little different. They're always a kind of a step behind and, and she's not a good enough wrestler or a level changer to really give Valentina problems. So I don't think that Alexa is going to be the one to do it. But I do think that uh, Aaron, you know, after after Aaron Blanchfield's last performance, I think that she can do it. Definitely think Taya Santos can do it. Men on Puro, maybe. 
She's less no, diverse though, so maybe not. She's a little less diverse and she she's a bit wild. I don't know. I don't think she's skilled enough to do it. Mm-hmm. But I think that right now Taya Santos and Aaron Blanchfield could give her a run and make it and make things inter- very interesting. I wish Alexa Grasso was the one that could do it, but I have a feeling that Alexa Grasso is Valentina's opponent for a reason. Mm. I think that when that when Valentina had the opportunity to go, uh, you know what? Should I wait for Taya Santos or should I just fight somebody else? I think she jumped at the opportunity to fight Alexa Grasso. That's interesting. You feel like she saw this as a uh, a beneficial or a, a good matchup for her. A better matchup than Taya for yeah. sure. I think she saw this as a okay. You know, she can't do it. Okay, give me the, give me Alexa Grasso then, mm-hmm. because this is a better matchup for her. I mean, it's a favorable matchup for her. And I hate to say it because I really like Alexa Grasso. I really appreciate her fighting style, but just her skill set is lacking in the area that she's going to need in order to win this fight. Mm-hmm. I think one of the biggest things, that, and you touched on it earlier, that that gave Tyler Santos um, that closed that gap for Tyler Santos is her just raw physicality and strength. She's a big flyweight. A big, big flyweight. And I don't, you know, Alexa Grasso had a lot of success at strawweight. She looks good at flyweight. Don't don't get me wrong. I don't think she should be a strawweight anymore. I just don't think she's on the the bigger end. And I, I see Valentina as not a big person, but she's got a frame for the division. She's muscled out. And I, I don't know if Alexa has that physical style once they do start engaging uh, in any sort of clinch or grappling situation, what that's going to be like for her. So will be interesting to see. Yeah, I don't know if she's even going to have the speed. I mean, it, it, the speed could be similar, but again, like boxers kickers are always at a disadvantage against good kickboxers. Mm-hmm. They just they're just up a step off. They're just a little bit off because they're they're thinking with their hands first, and then a kick comes out, but it's a little too late, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough for fight for Alexa Grasso. So again, not a pick, but <laughs> and. It, to make things crazy, I'm picking a. No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm picking, I'm picking Valentina to win yeah. this one. I think this is a favorable matchup for her. I think she jumped at this opportunity. Um, I love the Shevchenko sisters, but she got all the talent in the family, so <laughs> I hate to say it that way. But, uh, but I, I think that she's, um, she's, she's going to be able to run away with this one. You think it'll be a runaway? Kind of. I yeah. think it, I think it could get ugly. Yeah. Alexa's so tough that it's going to be difficult to finish her, but I could see potentially a skill gap becoming you know, evident pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, this could this could look like a Lauren Murphy situation. Mhm. Where it's just like, "Oh, this is getting bad." Yeah, we shall see. I mean, I do think I definitely rate Alexa's skill set higher than Lauren's, but in terms of just toughness and ability to stay in a fight, you know, she's definitely got that. I, I hope it's a good fight. I hope it's a scrap. I hope we get to see what's that. Well, just to elaborate on, yeah, Alexa Grasso has a much deeper skill set than Lauren, but the fact that Lauren was trying to shoot more kept Mm -hmm. her in that fight a little bit more. I think that once Alexa starts getting touched up, she might not have an answer. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it could get ugly because she's going to be still trying to trade and then getting touched up a bit. Yeah. And if she clinches, I've got lots of footage that will show you what will happen. I can she's break it down because yeah, 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 it's going to be the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dean, I always appreciate your thoughts. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this co-main event, UFC 285 coming up this weekend. Are you going to be, you going to be there? I'm going to be there. As always. I appreciate it. All right. I will see you in Vegas. Uh, I get in on Thursday. Maybe we'll grab a cup of coffee, dice it up, whatever. Let's do it. All and, right. And some cheesecake. And some cheesecake. Let's <laughs> do it. All right. Dean, thank you so much. And uh, guys, keep it locked in right here. Press like, uh, press subscribe, if you will. Helps me out a lot. And uh, we'll see you at UFC 286. <laughs>